Aloha, I'm Jari Sugano, Extension Agent with the University of Hawaii. You're about to see a brief video about a virus disease that has severely affected banana growers in Hawaii and threatens to spread wherever bananas are being grown. This disease is called banana bunchy top. Here you will learn how to identify a sick tree, how to treat and destroy them properly, and how to manage this disease in your area. We need your help to control this problem. Please, kokua. Bananas are one of the world's and Hawaii's most important foods. About 190 commercial banana farms produced nearly 21 million pounds of fresh bananas in Hawaii in 2005 for retail sales valued at over $9.1 million. Countless other small farms and backyard growers produce more bananas for sale at farmers markets and for their families. This highly nutritious crop is grown on most types of agricultural and residential lands throughout the state, making it one of the most common plants found anywhere in Hawaii. Banana Bunchy Top was first discovered in Hawaii in 1989 at a banana farm in Punalu'u, Oahu. Despite aggressive and costly disease eradication efforts, it spread rapidly throughout Oahu and to most of the neighbor islands. Oahu and Kauai have the most widespread problem with the disease and it threatens collections of rare Hawaiian banana varieties on Maui and the Big Island. I'm Scott Chan. I've been farming apple bananas and other varieties of bananas on the east side of Oahu for about 30 years now. The farm is a family-run operation. Uh, the name of the farm is Campesino Enterprises. Well, plant diseases on bananas can either reduce your production or kill off your entire production. So it's important to recognize them early and uh, do necessary treatment procedures. I first noticed symptoms of banana bunchy top, I believe it was in 1988 in Kahalu when we were farming on that side of, of the island. And it's been with me ever since. I've never been able to escape it. It's always been around. The impact of the banana bunchy top disease on, on my operation has been in a sense when we first started growing bananas, the crop was rather easy to produce. We had things like thrips or black leaf streak to contend with. But once banana bunchy top came on board, it changed the whole economics of growing bananas. It became much more costly to produce. So in, a, in, a, in effect, everything on our bottom line changed. Bunchy top is caused by a plant pathogenic virus known as the banana bunchy top virus. The virus can only infect bananas and not other plants. Bunchy top is diagnosed by identifying the disease symptoms on sick plants or by laboratory testing of the banana leaves for the presence of the bunchy top virus. Diseased plants are stunted and may not produce fruit. Leaves are bunched up at the top of the plant. Leaves are narrow, erect and upright, and have yellow and wavy fringes that are usually tattered. Leaf sheaths and petioles are mottled with green patches and streaks. Leaf veins are seen to have a Morse code dot and dash effect and make tiny green J-hooks near the leaf midrib. Fruits, if they are even produced, are deformed and small. Plants can be infected for up to 125 days without showing any visible symptoms. I do lots of scouting on the farm to monitor for it not only bunchy top, for, but for any other kind of disease or any kind of symptom in a plant that would express itself that could be potentially dangerous. The, dis the symptoms of disease are, express themselves in, in the crown of the plant. Uh, the leaves look a little deformed, almost bunched in a sense. They could be yellow, mottly, and 
if you look closer, they'll have hooks. And Morse coding, if you look very closely, that you can observe in the leaf to make a determination whether the tree is sick or not. Banana bunchy top is spread either by insect vectors or by humans. Tiny flying insects called banana aphids pick up and transmit the virus by feeding on infected plant sap. Banana aphids occur throughout Hawaii and in windy situations can spread the disease for miles. Humans can also spread the disease by moving infected banana plants from one location to another. The banana aphid is a tiny black insect that feeds on banana plant sap. Adult females produce a great number of live offspring that form large colonies. They can often be found on the youngest or most tender tissues of the banana plant, such as the youngest unfurled leaf and under the tender leaf sheaths near the stem. Banana aphids can grow wings and fly from plant to plant and from farm to farm, picking up and spreading banana bunchy top virus as they probe and feed. They are often tended and protected by ants. All banana plants showing symptoms of bunchy top should be destroyed, but only after first spraying them to kill the infectious aphids. An aphid is a small black looking insect that you could probably find on the suckers or the cakeys of the plant. Uh, the aphid is the only uh, way that disease can be transmitted from plant to plant. So it's important that if you want to control the disease, you have to control the aphid and you have to kill the sick trees in your field or dig them out, get rid of them. For control of banana bunchy top virus, it is critical that the grower follow a strict control program involving monitoring for diseased plants, spraying to control the aphids, and destruction of all infected mats or units. Spray the infected trees with an approved insecticide to kill the aphids. Homeowners can use an insecticidal soap or soapy water. Growers with a pesticide applicator's license have more insecticides available to them. Be sure to soak the crown of the plant with the spray. As the liquid runs down the stem, it saturates under the leaf sheaths where aphids are usually feeding and hiding. There is no need to spray all of the leaf blades because the aphids usually do not feed on the blades. Return to the plant a few days or weeks later to spray it again because other aphids will return to the plant or you may have missed some. You can even strip away some of the outer leaf sheaths to expose the aphids to the spray. It is very important that the aphids be killed before the plant is chopped down or they may fly to other plants and cause new infections. After the aphids are killed, the entire mat or unit containing the diseased plant must be destroyed immediately. You can dig them out and let them rot in place or inject them with an approved herbicide such as Roundup which takes about four to six weeks to kill large plants. First, remove all fruit from the plants within the treatment area prior to treatment. Use a large screwdriver to make a hole in the stem at least one foot above the ground and up to about knee height. Make a large downward sloping hole that ends in the middle of the stem. Rotate the screwdriver back and forth to stop the flow of sap. Insert the nose of a spray bottle containing pure Roundup and inject about one milliliter of product concentrate per two to three inches of stem diameter. For very small plants, just inject the herbicide vertically into the top of the plant. Any subsequent regrowth must also be destroyed. All plants within a four-foot radius of the treated mat should be mechanically destroyed. Do not apply more than one-half fluid ounce of Roundup per mat or unit. Do not harvest any fruit or plant materials from treated plants following injection. Do not allow livestock to consume treated materials. Do not haul diseased plants to the dump. Allow the plant to decompose in place. The plant is no longer a source of the virus. With all pesticides, it is critical to follow the label instructions exactly. Banana planting should be monitored weekly for bunchy top. Create banana-free buffer zones around banana farms. Control banana aphids on alternate hosts for the aphids in the area, such as taro, heliconia, and ginger. Do not move diseased banana plants within or among islands. Do not plant diseased keikis. Control ants and aphid populations where possible. Grow bananas in combination with other types of plants. 
Grow a more tolerant banana variety such as the dwarf apple rather than the more intolerant Williams or other Cavendish varieties. The choice of variety of banana that you want to grow is important if you were to supply the banana bunchy top. We previously grew Williams and we lost the whole entire acreage to banana bunchy top. The dwarf apple banana is somewhat more tolerant, there are no resistant varieties, but it is more tolerant so with a good program we're able to survive and still farm bananas. The variety we know as here in Hawaii as dwarf apple is actually in the world known as Santa Catarina Prata. It's from Brazil. It was a mutant that was found over there. The surrounding area outside of my banana farm is filled by residences, both upwind and downwind of me. Uh, many of these residents have banana trees on them. The threat of outside sources of disease coming into my farm, I estimate, is almost 80 to 90 percent of my problem. If I was just alone on this farm, I don't think banana bungee top disease would be all that significant. But it's the outside source of continuing disease that keeps coming onto my farm. It causes outbreaks to occur every now and then, or continuously actually. And that, that's why it's important for me to rogue neighboring areas of disease. It's funny to note as we drive around the east side of Oahu and, and up to even the north side how fewer bananas we see even in backyards. The disease has basically made it hard for even homeowners to grow bananas. And large commercial farms on the north shore had to give up growing bananas entirely. very, very serious, the most serious disease we've encountered so far growing bananas. What can you do to help Hawaii remain a productive place to grow bananas? One, you can inspect, treat, and destroy all banana plants with the banana bunchy top virus. Two, you can avoid moving diseased plants from around the state. Three, you can educate yourself, your family, and your friends about the banana bunchy top virus. And four, you can get involved now and be a part of the solution. Future generations would thank you for it. For more information about the banana bunchy top virus, please contact the Cooperative Extension Office nearest you.